Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we're going to be exploring about the electronic structure of matter. Now when we talk about the electronic structure of matter, this refers to the idea on how electrons are distributed among the atom. But before we proceed, let us try to look on some historical perspectives on how we come up to the electronic structure of matter. So the first one is we have Niels Bohr. So according to Niels Bohr, so he was the one who proposed that there is a probability that electrons can be found within certain locations around the nucleus of the atom, in which this is known for his planetary model of the atom. We have three different features of the Bohr's planetary model. So first, we have the energy levels. Now, when we talk about the energy levels, this is somewhat related to the motion of the electron around the nucleus. Now, the ground state refers to the lowest and most stable energy level. And lastly, we have the excited state in which this refers to the energy levels that are way above the ground state. Now, when an electron transfers from one energy level to another, in particular, from the ground state to the excited state, they tend to release energy. Now, best example of this idea is the atomic spectra. Now, when we talk about the atomic spectra, so as the name implies, atomic, so from the word atom, and spectra, which means color. So when we talk about the atomic spectra, this refers to the colors that are being emitted by certain elements when they are subjected to high heat temperature. The atomic spectra of every element depend on their characteristics, mainly because of their energy levels. As illustrated right here, there are certain elements that shows different atomic spectra. Now, again, the atomic spectra of matter depends on the elements itself, mainly because of of their energy levels. But the main highlight of the planetary model of the atom by Niels Bohr is the atomic orbital in which atomic orbital refers to the region or the space in which there is a high probability of finding an electron. The number of electrons per energy level can be summarized or can be determined using the formula of 2n squared in which the n symbolizes for the energy level. So let us try to look on this example. So the number of electrons per energy level can be determined using the formula 2n squared. So let us try to have some example. So in the first principal energy level, which is 1, so if we'll try to substitute the value, which is 1, so 1 squared is 1 times 2. So therefore, there is a maximum of 2 electrons that can be located within the first energy level. Same goes with the second energy level. So if we'll try to substitute 2, to n, so 2 squared is 4, then multiply to 2, so 8. So meaning, you can find 8 electrons within the second energy level. Same goes with the third, fourth, and fifth, with 18, 32, and 50 electrons respectively. But there are some scientists who says there are some restrictions of the Bohr planetary model. And one of these scientists is Louis de Broglie. Now, according to him, so he was the one who formulated the wave-particle duality of the electron, in which he says that if light can behave as photons, so ideally the wave-particle Particle duality explains that it refers that electrons can possess different wave-like properties. So from this idea of Louis de Broglie comes another scientist in the name of Erwin Schrödinger. So he was the one famously known for the quantum mechanical model or the electron cloud in which electrons can be found within a given area around the nucleus. So the main idea of the quantum mechanical model is that electrons can be located within certain orbitals with varying shapes and orientation just like this one. Now the equations made by Erwin Schrödinger to propose the quantum mechanical model of the atom has been supported through the quantum numbers in which the quantum numbers refers to the set of numbers which is used to determine the shape and orientation of the atomic orbitals. So quantum numbers comes in four different types, so namely n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, in which the n stands for the principal quantum number, the l as the angular or the azimuthal quantum number, the m sub l as the magnetic quantum number, and the m sub s as the electron spin quantum number. Now let us try to explore them one by one. Let us first begin with the principal quantum number, in which this is represented by the small letter n. So this determines the energy level. Now it can be represented according to the atomic radius or the distance from the atom's nucleus to the electron. Now it can be represented by any whole number starting from 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. Next, we have the angular or the azimuthal quantum number in which this determines the possible shapes of the orbital, in which this can be determined by the formula L is equal to N, which is the value of the principal quantum number minus 1. Now, in terms of the L for 0, so meaning they, there are only one possible shape of the orbital, which is a solid sphere, and for the P orbital, so there is 1 with varying orientations. And for those with value of L, which is equal to 2, so it can have two possible shapes. Next, we have the magnetic quantum number in which this is represented by the M sub L. So the magnetic quantum number determines the orientation or the possible orientations of the orbital. So the magnetic quantum number is represented through the value of the L as expressed through integers, either positive or negative. So for example, we have an 
azimuthal quantum number value of 1. So therefore, it can have possible magnetic quantum numbers as either negative 1, 0, or 1, in which these numbers represent the possible orientation of the orbitals. Another example is for an azimuthal quantum number with a value of 2. So therefore, its possible values for the magnetic quantum number can be either negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. Meaning there are 5 possible orientations for this specific orbital. And lastly, we have the electron spin quantum number in which this determines the possible direction of the spin of the electron in which this is represented by the symbol small letter m sub s so it can be represented as either positive one half or negative one half so if a specific electron is moving in a clockwise direction so therefore the possible value of its electron spin quantum number is equivalent to positive one half on the other hand if the electron is moving on a counterclockwise direction so therefore the possible value of its electron spin quantum number is equivalent to negative one half now, let us try to go to the idea of the electron configuration in which this refers to the idea on how electrons are distributed within the orbitals of an atom. Okay, so an example right here is that the electron configuration for hydrogen, which has the atomic number of 1. So, there are certain symbols that we need to consider in making or in writing the electron configuration. So, the first one is the energy level represented by the quantum number n. So, in this case, so in this case, hydrogen is found within the first energy level. So, therefore, it has an energy level value of 1. Next, we have the orbital sublevel or th usually this is represented by the azimuthal quantum number L. In this case, we have the S sublevel. And lastly, we have the number of electrons in the superscript in this case. So the number of electrons within the hydrogen atom is equivalent to 1 simply because that the atomic number is 1 and therefore the atomic number is equivalent to the number of protons, the number n, to the number of electrons. Now let us try to look on the certain rules that is related to the electron configuration. Let us first begin with the Aufbau principle. Now the term Aufbau means building up in which electrons are filled up from the lowest energy level to the highest energy level. The Aufbau principle starts within each energy level. So for example, so within the first energy level, the possible sublevels is S. Then for the second energy level, we have S and P. Then for the third energy level, we have S, P, and D. For the fourth and the fifth energy level, so we have S, P, D, and F. And for the sixth, we have the S, P, and D. And for the seventh, we have this S and P. Now, what are these letters symbolized? Now, this represents the possible number of electrons that can be carried out within a specific sublevel, in which in the S sublevel, we can have two electrons. On the P sublevel, we have six electrons. For the D, we have 10. And for the F, we have 14 electrons. So the Aufbau principle goes like this. So it starts with 1S followed by 2S. Next by 2p, as you can see, because the end of the arrow in 2s, so therefore we need to start on the next arrow, which is 2p. Then following 3s, then 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p. And do not be worried because this will be represented within the arrow lines itself. As long as you know where is the end and the start of each arrow, therefore you will not be having a difficult time. Next, we have the Pauli exclusion principle in which this refers to the idea in which a single orbital can only be occupied by two electrons. Now, as you can see right here, each orbital is represented by each box. So the main question right here is that why are there different number of boxes for every specific sublevel? So let us recall that that the S sublevel has one box simply because that it has only two electrons. So, and remember, within the Pauli exclusion principle, we can only cater two electrons within a specific orbital, which is represented by a box. So in this case, the S sublevel is only made up of one box. On the other hand, the P orbital can handle six electrons. So therefore, six divided by two electrons for every orbital so therefore there are three boxes on the other hand the d sublevel has 10 electrons so therefore it has five boxes for five orbitals and lastly we have the f orbital which has the number of 14 electrons so therefore 14 divided by 2 so therefore the f orbital can handle seven boxes and lastly we have the hans rule in which this goes with the idea that electrons should be filled up first in one specific direction before going to the another so the arrows pointing upward the notes for the electrons that are moving within a clockwise direction. Meanwhile, the electrons pointing downward refers to the electrons that are moving on the counterclockwise direction. So in this case, we need to fill up the electrons first that are moving in a clockwise direction before proceeding to the counterclockwise electrons. Now let us try to have some examples. Now in this case, 
So, let us try to look for the electron configuration for oxygen, which has an atomic number of 8. So, in this case, it will go like this. So, we will start with the first energy level, which is 1. So, we have 1s, 2. So, again, so the S sublevel can handle two electrons, so therefore we need to fill this up. Okay, next we have 2S2, in which it is found within the second energy level and at the same time within the S sublevel, in which it can cater two electrons. And lastly, we have 2P4, in which it is in the second energy level still, but on the P orbital. But take note, we did not use the number 6 because. If we'll try to add up all of the electrons, so we have 2 plus 2, which is, which is 4, and another 4, which is equivalent to 8. And remember, oxygen has only an atomic number of 8. So 2 plus 2 plus 4 is equivalent to 8. In this case, it is the atomic number for oxygen. So therefore, this is the electron configuration for oxygen. Now, let us try to make its orbital diagram. So again, every sublevel should be represented by a given orbital diagram. So in this case, the 1s sublevel is represented by one box. The 2s is one box as well, and the 2p is three boxes. Now, let us try to fill this up. Now, remember the Hans rule. We need to fill up first the clockwise direction before proceeding to the next one. So, in this case, in filling up the 1s, so we need to do first the arrow up, which is for the clockwise direction, and the arrow down for the counterclockwise direction. So, therefore, we have already filled in the 1s orbital. Okay, next, we have the 2s. So, therefore, another arrow up, another arrow down. So, so far, remember that the arrows represents the number of electrons. So, we already have four arrows, meaning four, four electrons. So, we still need four more. Okay, so let us try to fill in the 2P. So, arrow up, arrow up, arrow up. Again, we need to fill up first all of the clockwise direction electrons. So, in this case, we have already filled in three. So, therefore, we still lack one. So, that will serve for one downward, which means... It is an electron moving on a counterclockwise direction. So that represents the orbital diagram for oxygen. Okay, another example. So this time, let's try for magnesium, in which it has an atomic number of 12. So same goes. We start with the 1s, which is 2. Then another 2s. Okay, so 2 plus 2 is 4. So we still need 8 more. Then next... 2p6, so we need to consume all of the 6 electrons within the 2p sublevel simply because that we haven't filled yet the number of the electrons within magnesium, which is 12. And lastly, so 2 plus 2 plus 6, we have 10, so we still lack 2 more. So therefore, the next energy level to 2p is 3s, so we have 3s2. So here is the electron configuration for magnesium. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. Now let us try to make the orbital diagram. So as you can see, it is represented by the respective boxes. Now let us try to fill this in. Since all of the sublevels have already reached the maximum number of electrons, so therefore, all of the boxes will be filled in with the number of arrows. So for the 1s, we have 2. For the 2s, we have 2. And for the 2p, we have 3 moving on the clockwise direction. And another 3 moving on the counterclockwise direction. And lastly, we have the 3s. We have 2 electrons as well. So, an arrow up and an arrow down, respectively. Okay, last, let us try to look on the electron configuration for another element which has a greater number of electrons. In this case, we have cobalt which has the atomic number of 27. Now, let us try to make the electron configuration. So, let us begin first with 1s2, then 2s2. So, 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, next, we have 2p6, another 6. So, therefore, it has 10. Let's add more. So 3s2. So the 3s2 sublevel will make it 12. Another 6, which is 18 for 3p6. And for 4s2, okay, and 3d7. So as you can see, as we have reached the 4s sublevel, so we have already attained 20 electrons. That is why when we use the 3d sublevel, we have only put 7 because in order to fill in the number of electrons for cobalt, which is the atomic number of 27. Now, making the orbital diagram, it will look like this. So again, from 1s to 4s, so it has already completed all of the maximum number of electrons. So therefore, we will fill in all of those with the respective arrows as representing the electrons. But however, when we proceed to the 3D, so therefore, it will have only 
five. Okay, the first five will be for the clockwise direction arrows, which means the clockwise direction electrons. And we still have two more electrons in which that will be represented by the counterclockwise electrons represented by the downward arrows. So that is the orbital diagram for the cobalt. So that concludes our episode for today. This has been your Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!